What's up, everybody? It's your boy. Acting like a YouTube personality. So, uh, I think I got everything configured the way I need it to for the videos, but this one's going to be about um, some sound effects that I'm making for a survival horror video game group. Um, so I had, I started this idea late in the process, so some of the stuff is already done, but I'll show you guys all of that, and then we'll work on some additional things they want me to do, um, or at least one of them. Uh, ideally keep these kind of clear and concise. So the first one that I did was <clears throat> it, uh, is the name of the the creature thing, uh, no relation to the clown it, but what I did for that one was I had a tiger roar, a barn owl, which I duplicated two times, uh, that I ended up using for the sound. Uh, the initial concept that I gave them was more of a roar and they wanted a screech, so let you guys hear that real quick so you can see what it sounds like. It's it's pretty shrill, so get get ready. Yeah, so I mean definitely screechy. Um the reason why I use these is the tiger roar, for example. Uh big bodies have a lot of resonance. Uh, and as you can hear, there's a lot of resonance to that tiger's kind of roar and groan to it. Uh, all of these are processed. Uh, I have three screens. So I gotta remember that stuff's popping up over here that I need to bring over here so you guys can see it. But uh, boost at the low end, pretty much hacked the high end. Um, cause that's all I really wanted from it. And then the barn owl. Uh, so this one's also got some processing on it. We did a little DSing cause it's, it's really, really something. <laughs> uh, so chomp off a little bit at the top, make it a little less harsh, harsh. Um, and then I duplicated that track twice. Uh, did some additional processing on it, and I think these ones, yeah. So, this particular duplication, we popped it up three semitones, and this one we popped down a whole octave, <clears throat> excuse me, to get these, uh, these sounds. And the idea is that all the sounds that you hear in movies are really kind of embellished, for lack of a better word. So, to get a little body, we get the tiger in there. To have a nice spread across the frequency spectrum, we duplicate and then add the, the additional frequencies by pitching it down or up. Um, so this, I'll let you guys actually hear the, uh, the original too. I'm fairly proud of that one how it turned out, even though it's not what they were looking for. Um, so this ended up revision one becoming the screech, but this was the original here. Not too shabby. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that. It's kind of low for me. Let me see. So with that one, um, I remember one of the references they gave me for how they wanted it to sound was um, Giratina from Pokemon. And when I heard it, I immediately, like, boom, hey, I, I hear Rodan and Mothra in that. And uh, turns out, supposedly, he did use some of that to create your, uh, Giratina's sounds. But what I wanted was something that was mm, closer to the, the newer Godzilla. Um, 
So with that, I actually used a limpkin, which is like a type of bird. Um, and like most birds, it's it's pretty high pitched, but it does this like rhythmic clucking right here. Actually, let's hear the whole thing. So don't mind the chops, because I didn't end up using all of that, but I think I just used this portion. It's that rhythmic element to it I thought would be a good back end, the transition from the high down into the low, like like it went from the head voice down into the chest of this creature or whatever it was. Um, but with this one in particular, we also we pitched it down two octaves um, from the original. The original has none on it. And that's just a straight click. You can... Uh, but with it pitched down too, like that. Uh, and then we added some good old distortion and some transient shaping to get this sound. So we went from this to to get to that uh, original roar that you guys heard. So that's the scream. They also had me do a hum, an electric hum. Uh, it needed the loop seamlessly, so um, this is a little bit extra into it, but the layering is fairly minimal. We have like a fluorescent light hum and then some bigger machinery type electric hum right here. Let me, there we go. Um, and then the idea is that if we were to duplicate this and just let it run, you wouldn't hear any of this chop in here. So, and if it runs from start to finish, actually, when it loops and starts back over, we won't hear any kind of pops or anything. So it sounds pretty seamless to me. Um, let me actually check something real quick. Oh, no, that's all the way up. <laughs> so, that's the electric hum. Then here we have the menu noise. Um, so this one's just the hovering. Real cheap, or uh, real short one shot. When you go to hover over a menu, it's that's it. Pretty simple. And then we have a heartbeat that he asked for. Um, this one, again, just kind of duplicated the track and then pitched it in some different directions. This was the original. So kind of stereotypical bassy heartbeat, which isn't bad. It just feels a little thin to me. So what we did was pitched it and got that so it's got more body to it and for like a survival horror game that's kind of kind of something we want right we want that body the tension that comes with it uh then we have a picking up item pretty simple well actually it would have been both these <laughs> if i can solo them both there we go Excuse me. Then this one is clicking an option. <clears throat> Excuse me. Real subtle. Nothing over the top. And we also have a door opening one that I made. Uh, we did some processing on it. Again, boosting the, the low end 
and getting some of the, the harmonics in it. And then we also put on a convolution reverb. Um, every time I say convolver, it messes, <laughs> messes me up when I try to say the name. Um, but we chose York Minster because I wanted something that that sound sounded like what the environment was inside the video game, which is an empty school. Uh, a little girl running from this monster in an empty school, so this is what we ended up with. And I think that turned out really well. So then let me bring up what the other stuff they wanted. And some things they added on afterwards. And okay, so it looks like we need four. Mm. We'll call this one locker closing. So we need a locker closing sound. Um, need a locker opening sound. And we need a opener. Didn't need the fourth. So create those real quick. Uh, so what we'll work on so you guys can see is the locker closing one. So we already have uh, kind of the, the file that I want to work with. We're going to drag and drop that into the uh, session here. We get to listen to it at first. So chances are we're gonna do some stuff for this. Just it. So there's a lot of extra stuff in there. So we're gonna have to get rid of that noise and chop that up since that's a whole sequence there. That's open and close. So let's change the view real quick. Whoops. So it's open around here. Make a cut here and then so he opens or closes it right around here. We'll be modest with this cut because we're going to do a fade on there anyway. Get rid of that. Actually, yeah, before we do all these, this splicing, let's get the noise profile first. This is probably also a good section for the noise profile, actually. I think that was the issue before. Yeah, I only applied it to the one section. Yeah, so that's good there. Go ahead and make that cut. Uh, right here, we'll make this one. Zoom that back out. We don't need all of that. And we don't need. So this tells me a little bit where the sounds at the darker area being silence. So if I'm trying to make a cut here, and I want to make sure that I'm not actually hitting anything. This is a pretty good frame of reference. 
excuse me, while keeping it uh, within the realm of realistic. So we're going to put some fades on this. Put another one there. If I can find it. I think that's pretty good. That sounds like a locker opening. So let's listen to this. So that double, double hit sounds weird to me. It doesn't seem like, uh, obviously, because it's a, an actual recording, that's what really happens, but when I think of a locker closing, I don't think it hits twice. So we got right around here. Mm. No. That's it. So we get some talking in here, which is unfortunate because it's right during that whistling, which is kind of also what we want. So let's see if. We can get another noise profile and cut it out. A little bit. So it's not hurt as much. You can dig that. But now we need to get rid of this extra hit. So based on this, we can see that it's kind of ramping up right there. Although we can probably get away with a cut here. I bet. So let's hear that. Push comes to shove, we can just use that one instead of this. It's not bad. So let's put a fade out. And then find where I would, I think that's where we want to start. Right before that whistling. Get a little fade in. Whoops. Hmm. So this is still kind of getting in the way. I kind of want that. I wonder. Trying to see if I can find another area where the human talking might be. It's right at the hit, actually. <laughs> so, wondering if we can, let's see if we can just splice this. Looks like it butts right up to it. It's pretty close. It's 
still get a bit of the people talking. So let's see. Delete that. Let's see what that sounds like. It's not bad. I think we can live with that. So. Put a fade on there. Fade in. Don't really need it based on the the waveform view, but for good measure, we're just going to put one there and give that another play. I still kind of hear the people talking, I think. It's a lot less perceptible though. So what we're going to do, let's bounce this. And try to work with this in here. Looks like I have more than one instance of it. Whoops. Gotta love hitting the wrong button. Save that. It's Gucci, so we're done here. And let's bring that in. Fortunately, this is all chopped up, so what I'm going to do is uh, tab the transient so I can figure out where Pro Tools thinks the sound ends. So Maybe here? Yeah, we don't hear anything here. So we get cut there. Because we don't need all of the silence. And then. Oops, keep hitting the wrong button. Right there. Which is exactly about where the wind up starts. So this is the closed section. This is the open, we'll drop this here. So now we're just working on this. It sounds, it's not bad. So, again, with the Hollywoodized type stuff, that's real life, but that's not really what we're looking for. So, I want some girth. We're going to put a kick in here, or a layer a kick in with the sound. Let's see, native instruments should have something for me. Mm -hmm. Where is it at? Drums. Kick. And that's why. Mm, that's the kind of thud we want, but it's got that the kind of icy metallic thing at the top, which is okay though. So I'm gonna mute the click track. We don't need that. Um, now we gotta send MIDI through the Phantom real quick. This should be. Whoops. Mm. Let me bring this up real quick. Uh, probably would help if I had the instrument selected. It's been a long day. <laughs> I promise I'm not usually this slow. Yeah. There we 
go. So let's see. Too high. I like the A. So I think the A is good for this. Let's go ahead and record this in. And we can stop there. Um, now we need to make some adjustments to this. It's a kick, so we don't need all that much length of it. But we do need to line it up. So, I would say, actually, we can stop. Hitting all the wrong buttons for just a second. So we're going to try to nudge this into place about what the, the fundamental of this so it looks like sort of right around in here would be a good spot for it. This is when the hit happens. We have to wind up here, so actually somewhere right there. Let's hear what that sounds like. I think that needs to nudge it back a little more. Now forwards. There we go. Just a little bit more. Because it should be say like a fraction of a second after you get the metal on metal and then you hit the frame of the locker I think that's good so now we need to layer it so over here I have over, over here I have my uh, iPad set up with U control so I have all, all my volume mixing right there so we're gonna turn this kick down not that low. Turn down for what? The sound design. It's not bad. I want a little more. It's pretty good. Maybe another decimal. Let's see here it by itself. And then with the kick. No. Needs more than that. That's better. Split the difference and then move on to the next section. So we know there was some high end on this. I'm going to cut out just in case. Cute. Here, down here. So we'll go ahead and cut this so I can get it to loop. That's better. Pretty much got rid of the, the, the hi-hat hit like right afterwards. And let's hear it with this. I like it. 
Got some some boob to it. So now what we need to do is kind of glue these two together. <clears throat> so, uh, We have both these being routed here. This needs to go down here. And what we want is some more convolution reverb. I actually just picked up a free one from Pro Tools for being uh, the little insider program. that I haven't tried out yet, but I have to find it first. <laughs> what was it called? Yeah, go figure, IR. So, we want something that is going to give that empty hallway feel, I think. Mm. Let's see. Do, do, do. Medium hall? Let's hear that. That's pretty good. That's a lot. So let's turn that down. I think, yeah. Did we hit it? Let's... Yeah. <laughs> So that's about what we wanted for the convolution reverb right there. So all together we should have something... Sounds like this. Well, let's just play it without this. Sounds like a locker in the hall to me. So... That's pretty much it for that. So we have the, the locker close sound created. Um, I'm going to work on the locker opening separately, but just wanted to give you guys an idea of the workflow and the, kind of the decision making in, in my process as a, a journey through being a sound designer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pardon all the, the burps. All right. Thanks, guys.